Guardian archetype was a set of cards originally used by Raphael, one of the core members of the Orichalcos group who served darts during the Waking the Dragons arc. Raphael was a tragic character. He lost his entire family during a freak storm accident whilst aboard a cruise ship in the middle of the ocean. He would wash up on a deserted island as the sole survivor. On that island, he would remain for three long years, which is almost as long as Tom Hanks in the movie Castaway. However, while Tom Hanks had his football friend Wilson to keep him company, Raphael would instead maintain his sanity thanks to the dual monster cards left to him by his little brother. These cards were the Guardian Archetype. Together, Raphael and these cards would form a strong bond. So strong, in fact, he would begin to see their dual monster spirits. However, as a result, due to Raphael's dependence on these cards, he began to view them more akin as family, which in turn caused him to develop an innate fear of losing anyone close to him. This fear would manifest in his dueling, as Raphael would refuse to let any of his monsters go to the graveyard. As to him, none of them were expendable. You could almost say his ace monster, Guardian Iatos, was almost like a surrogate mother to him. Mommy, no! I mean, Guardian Iatos, no! So Raphael is happy when all of his monsters are on the field, none of them are in the grave. But what happens when things go bad in a duel? That is when his ace monster transforms into something much more sinister. But that's for later. For now, the Guardian cards made their real world debut in the 2003 pack, Dark Crisis. The way the archetype works is that each Guardian monster has a corresponding equip spell. A Guardian monster cannot be summoned face up to the field unless its corresponding equip spell is already face up on the field. And with that, that's pretty much their whole deal. The point I'm trying to make is that they're not great. Unfortunately, due to these restrictions, the monsters are way too hard to summon since you need the specific equip spell on the field. And since there is no easy way to search for the specific equip spells without out of archetype help, this makes the main deck monsters way too slow and not worth the resource investment. I mean, to make this deck viable nowadays, it would need like a field spell, some searcher cards to add to the archetype, maybe just a whole retrain to the entire monster lineup, make them able to special summon themselves to the field if their equip spell is on the field, for example. Basically, they need a lot of different things to make them good in the modern day. Except for Guardian Iatos. Guardian Iatos is fine, I, I, I like her. She's okay. So now we know a little bit more about the archetype. How about we take a look at each one of the monsters and see what their corresponding equip spell is. Let's start first with Guardian Bow. Its unique monster effect is when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, it gains 1000 attack. Negate the effects of monsters destroyed by battle with this card. In order to summon this card, the equip spell Wicked Breaking Flameberg Bow must be face up on the field. The equip spell's effect is you can send one card from your hand to the graveyard, then target one monster on the field. Equip this card to that target. It gains 500 attack. Negate the effects of opponent's monsters destroyed by battle with the equipped monster. Keep in mind, by the way, that I said you can't summon these monsters face up to the field unless their corresponding equipped spell is on the field. That is true, but you can set them face down. You're not allowed to flip them up, so you have to rely on your opponent attacking into your monster in order for them to flip the monster face up. But once it's up, if it survives the battle, you can do whatever you want with it after that. Just a little fun fact way to cheese them to the field without their equip spells. And speaking of fun fact, fun fact about the sword, by the way, Wicked Breaking Flameberg Bow actually corrupts the wielder that holds it. It consumes their personality and replaces it with its own. So you see Bow in this image, that is the sword having consumed its new host. This is actually why the monster has the same effect as the sword, because the monster is the sword. To further prove that this is true, we can see the same thing happen to a monster called Warrior de Graffa. You see, he came into possession of this sword too. It was during his what if scenario if he took the dark path 
in the Paths of Destiny. Whilst in possession of the sword, he became the Dark Lucius series of cards. If we look at the Dark Lucius's effects, guess what they all have in common? That's right, they have the same effect as the sword, that it negates the effects of the opponent's monsters destroyed by battle with this monster. And double fun fact, by the way, following the good path that Warrior de Graffa took, in his final form, he actually wields another of the Guardian equip spells, Twin Swords of Flashing Light Trice. He did attempt to wield Gravity Axe Grawl, but that didn't end very well. Next up, we have Guardian Seal. Its unique effect is you can send one equipped spell card you control that is equipped to this card to the graveyard to target one monster your opponent controls. Destroy that target. In order to summon this card, the equipped spell Shooting Star Bow Seal must be face upon the field. The equipped spell's effect is the equipped monster loses 1000 attack, but it can attack your opponent directly. We have Guardian Kaiest. Its unique effect is this card is unaffected by spell effects and cannot be targeted for attacks, but this does not prevent your opponent from attacking you directly. In order to summon this card to the field, the equipped spell Rod of Silence Kaiest must be face upon the field, and its effect is the equipped monster gains 500 defense, negate other spell effects that target the equipped monster, and if you do, destroy that spell card. We have a spicy one for this next one, Guardian Elmer. Its unique effect is when this card is normal or special summoned, you can target one appropriate equipped spell in your graveyard, equip that target to this card. In order to summon this card, the equipped spell Butterfly Dagger Elmer must be face up on the field. Its effect is that the equipped monster gains 300 attack. When this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard while equipped, you can return this card to the hand. Now, fun fact about Guardian Elmer. It's impossible to summon by its intended means. And what I mean by that is, you will never be able to use its normal summon or special summon ability. Why? Because Butterfly Dagger Elmer is banned. In fact, it has been banned since 2005. The reason why? Well, there is no hard once per turn on this card. People discovered that if you equip Butterfly Dagger Elmer onto Gearfried the Iron Knight, whose effect, by the way, is that it destroys any equipped spell that is equipped to it. By doing this, you create an infinite loop. We can now break the game however we see fit. Want to get unlimited drawing? Well, put Royal Magical Library on the field and just get yourself a guaranteed Exodia. Want unlimited attack points? Well, how about Magical Marionette? Or how about unlimited burn damage? So the moral of the story is, please give Butterfly Dagger Elmer a little bit of an error just like a, a hard ones per turn or something. It just would be nice to get this card back, I guess. Guardian Graal. Its unique effect is, if this card is the only card in your hand, you can special summon it from your hand. However, in order to special summon it, or just summon it in general, you first need to have its corresponding equip spell on the field. That is, Gravity Axe Graal must be face up on the field first. Its effect is the equipped monster gains 500 attack. Monsters your opponent controls cannot change their battle positions. By the way, some observant viewers might have noticed that if all of the monsters need to have an equipped spell on the field in order to summon them, uh, how do you get the ball rolling? Like, you need to have one guardian monster on the field if you're playing a pure guardian deck. How can I get a monster face up on the field to equip something to it? Well, that's the great part. You don't. Worst case scenario, you equip your equip spells onto the opponent's monsters just so you can get them on the field. There is one monster in this archetype that you can use. We'll talk about it a little bit later, but it's only one monster. Finally, for the main core Guardian monsters, we have Guardian Trice. Its unique effect is when this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, special summon the monster from the graveyard that was used for its tribute summon. In order to summon this card, the equipped spell Twin Swords of Flashing Light Trice must be face upon the field. And its effect is that you send one card from your hand to the graveyard, equip this card to a monster. It loses 500 attack, but it can make a second attack during each battle phase. Now, if we're in the middle of a duel and Raphael has been sticking to his guns and keeping all of his monsters on the field and out of the graveyard, well, that means we can summon our ace monster, Guardian Iatos. Its effect is that if you have no monsters in your graveyard, 
you can special summon this card from your hand. You can send one of your equipped spells equipped to this card to the graveyard to target up to three monsters in your opponent's graveyard. Banish those targets. And if you do, this card gains 500 attack for each monster banished by this effect until the end of the turn. Now, you might have noticed that Guardian Iatos doesn't have a summoning requirement, requiring a specific equipped spell on the field in order to be summoned. Well, Fun fact, in the anime, it requires Celestial Sword Iatos on the field to be summoned. In the real world, it doesn't, but the card still does exist. And its effect is, the equipped monster gains 500 attack. When this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can target one Guardian Iatos you control. It gains 500 attack for each banished monster. Two weird fun facts about this equip spell. The first one is very weirdly, this card says in its effect that it's always treated as a noble arms card. It has absolutely nothing to do with the noble arms archetype. It's just something to do with its Japanese naming kanji or something like that. So it's just sort of a carryover from that. It's weird. The other weird thing that is pretty stupid is that this card doesn't work with Guardian Iatos. Due to the wording on Celestial Sword Iatos, it actually misses the timing when it uses its effect, which is really weird for a card that's supposed to work with its intended monster. They just don't work together. That's insane, right? So let's just say Raphael's got Guardian Iatos out, things are going fine, but then suddenly <gasps> things go bad. Guardian Iatos dies and goes to the graveyard. Mommy, no! This means Iatos Alter now appears. Or Anti-Iatos. Dark Iatos. Whatever you want to call it. Its official name is Guardian Dread Scythe. It cannot be normal summoned or set. It must be special summoned by its own effect. If a Guardian Iatos is destroyed by battle or card effect and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon this card from your hand. When this card is special summoned, you can equip one Reaper Scythe Dread Scythe from your deck to this card. You cannot normal or special summon monsters, but you can normal set. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, send one card from your hand to the graveyard, and if you do, special summon this card from the grave. This monster's corresponding equip spell is Reaper Scythe Dread Scythe. Its effect is equip only to Guardian Dread Scythe. It gains 500 attack for each monster in the graveyards. So basically, this monster is the embodiment of abandoning the previous philosophy of keeping all the monsters alive and just embracing the, I'm going to dump everything into the grave now and I'm going to keep this one monster alive by literally sacrificing everything. It might be a metaphor for like holding on to deceased loved ones or something like that. All I know is that this monster becomes more powerful the more monsters are in the graveyard. And to help out the entire guardian archetype, we have the support monster, Arsenal Summoner. It's a flip monster, and its effect is when it's flipped, add one guardian card from your deck to your hand. Yet again, there's a weird naming thing with this monster. In its effect, it actually specifies that you can't add Celtic Guardian, Wing Dragon Guardian of the Fortress number one, Wing Dragon Guardian of the Fortress number two, Guardian of the Labyrinth, or the Reliable Guardian. Honestly, I don't think it would have hurt too badly if Arsenal Summoner could have added these cards. Like, who would have cared? But still. Regardless of that, Arsenal Summoner is actually a really integral part of this archetype because it's like the only searcher in the deck. But the Guardian Monsters would get a support card many years later. And it's really good. It's called Power of the Guardians. Its effect is if an attack is declared involving the equipped monster, place one spell counter on this card. The equipped monster gains 500 attack and defense for each spell counter on this card. If the equipped monster would be destroyed by a battle or card effect, you can remove one spell counter from your field instead. If you played Duel Links like a couple years ago, uh, this was a really big card back then, so it is a good card. I like it. We also have Guarded Treasure, which might be an actual Guardian card, as in the Japanese, it's known as Treasure Cards of the Guardian God. Its effect is that this card can only be activated by discarding five cards. When you do, draw two new cards. While this card is on the field, draw two cards instead of one for your normal draw during your draw phases. You'll have to tell me if that's any good. Let's say we start with six cards, we activate this card, we discard five cards, and then we draw two new cards and then i guess next turn we draw two new cards and two new cards again so uh, not that great in the guardian archetype it's probably better off in something else that prefers to be in the graveyard aside from these we have a couple non-archetype cards that help the guardian archetype or were used by Raphael. 
These include Really Eternal Rest. This card shows all the Guardian equip spells in its artwork. However, it works for and against them since it destroys all monsters equipped with equip spells. Basically, it's a good anti-Guardian card. So somebody uses it against you if you're using Guardian cards. Woof, that's my field wiped. But if you're equipping all your equip spells onto the opponent's monsters, that could help you out instead. Fairy of the Spring. This lets you target one equip spell in your graveyard to add back to your hand. However, that equip spell can be activated this turn. We have Morale Boost. Every time you equip an equip spell to a card, it increases the life points of the controller of the equip spell by 1,000 points. And each time an equip spell is removed from the field, the controller of that equip spell takes 1,000 points of damage instead. Finally, there are five cards that Raphael used that have not yet been printed. And one of them is really good, and that is Backup Gardener. Its effect is that you can select an equipped equip spell card on the field and equip it to another appropriate target. When this face-up card is selected as an attack target, you can discard one card to negate the attack. Guardian Shield, equip only to a Guardian Monster. It gains 300 defense. If a Guardian Monster you control would be destroyed by a battle, you can destroy this card instead. Purity of the Cemetery, activate only if you have no monsters in your graveyard. During each of your opponent's standby phases, inflict 100 damage to your opponent for each monster in your opponent's graveyard. If there is a monster card in your graveyard, destroy this card. Guardian Force, activate only while there are no Guardian Monsters in your graveyard. Negate the activation of an opponent's spell card and destroy it. Guardian Formation, activate only when a face-up Guardian Monster you control is selected as an attack target. Negate the attack and move that monster to an unoccupied monster card zone. Then you can activate one spell card from your hand or deck. The moving the card around thing, that's a reference to the uh, the Seal of Arikalkos. You can move it into the back row kind of thing. So that's what that effect was for. But with that, that was the Guardian Archetype done. Should these cards get a second lease on life? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you'd rather watch Raphael duel with this archetype, well, I have two spicy videos right here for you to watch. Watch either one. It's up to you. But yeah, thank you for watching, everybody. Catch you later.